So now what I want to talk to you guys about, I want to talk about current, but first we're going to talk a little bit about circuits. So electricity. So we're getting into electricity. Well, in chapter 16, we talked about electrostatics and electrostatics were charges at rest. All right. Well, now when we talk about electricity, we're going to talk about charges in motion. We're going to talk about the flow of charges through a circuit. So on the sheet I gave you, I have a diagram of a cross-sectional area of copper wire. Now we all know that copper is a very good conductor. The reason being it has mobile valence electrons. So what we can see, we can see the electrons can flow from one side of the metal to the other. Um, and they can just go through those metal cations. Now, because if we were to put a little pressure, like hook this up to a battery, those electrons would be able to be, they'll be pushed through. So with a little pressure, these charges will move. Now, the electrons, we can see the direction the electrons move. Now, when we talk about current in physics, we talk about conventional current. And conventional current always flows from positive to negative. So I want you to remember, if you know the direction of electron flow, conventional current or current is going to flow in the opposite direction. So here I have a diagram on your sheet. Now this says it's a battery. Um, this is really just one single cell, not really considered a battery. Notice the shorter end is going to be the negative terminal. The longer end is the positive terminal. And we're going to get into all the schematics and how you diagram a circuit. But I want you to kind of remember that. Now, obviously, it would make sense that electrons come out the negative terminal and they make their way back to the positive terminal. That just seems reasonable. So the electron flows from left to right. Well, that would mean conventional current or the current flows from right to left. So we can see current comes out the positive terminal, makes its way back to the negative terminal. Voltage is often called electrical pressure. It's what pushes the charges through. Um, the, in order to have a voltage, you have to have a potential difference. And we talked about that in the first part of the notes. Now, voltages. We know we have 9-volt batteries, we have 1.5-volt batteries, we have 6-volt batteries, and they're, they're what push the conventional current. They push those charges throughout the circuit. It creates an electric field inside a conductor, which makes charges move. So here's a depiction of just a simple circuit. All right, here we actually have a two-cell battery. That's a battery. Now, electrons, if you want to indicate, electrons are going to flow from the negative terminal back to the positive terminal. But if you want to talk about current, current's going to flow from that positive terminal, because it always opposes the direction of electron movement, back to the negative terminal. Now, right now, you see there's a switch there. That switch is open. So no charges are going to flow. You have to close that switch in order for charges to flow. Think about your light switches at your house. You turn the light on and off. What you're doing when you turn the light off is you're opening up the circuit. You're opening up that switch in that circuit. And charges can only move through a complete circuit or a closed circuit. So the point of circuits is to have energy or current flow through objects, which convert the energy to some other form. So we have our household circuits. We have our refrigerator hooked up to a circuit. We have our stove. We have our microwave. We have our hair dryer. Okay, what we're doing, we're converting that electrical energy to some other useful form of energy. So here's a, a little depiction. We've got a battery. All right, here's the positive terminal. So that's the direction current's going to flow. It's going to come out the positive, go back to the negative. Now, these are three light bulbs. Now, we're going to talk more about circuits later on in the chapter, but this is considered a series circuit. A series circuit because there's only one path for the current to take. And if I were to unscrew one of those light bulbs and take it out, guess what? I opened up the switch 
And now the path is now open, current can't flow. Now, if I were to, to depict that as more of a circuit diagram, all right, I'm showing a battery in my circuit, okay? Positive terminals right here. So my current's going to flow through. Now, this is just a circuit that's showing three resistors, okay? And resistors are these little squiggly lines. Each of these light bulbs is considered a resistor. Now, they would have the same resistance. So in this diagram, it's showing different um, resistances, which wouldn't be the case. But you can see, if one of those, there's only one path for the current to take. So if we got rid of one of those resistors, we would open up the circuit. The objects offer resistance to the circuit and extract energy. Resistors represent appliances, lights, etc., operating in circuits. So what's happening is this electrical energy in this circuit, okay, it's going through, and when you get to a resistor, which happens to be a light bulb in this case, you're going to convert that electrical energy to light energy, also heat energy, because those light bulbs heat up a little bit. And that's what resistors are. Resistors are our appliances in our household circuits. So what we're going to be talking about later on, like I said in the chapter, this is just a little preview, is we're going to talk about the schematics. So we're going to have to draw our own circuits. We always need a power source. That's a battery or a cell, something to push that charge along. Elements in a circuit. You're going to need resistors. Maybe lamps can serve as the resistors. Um, you're going to need connections. You're going to need that conducting wire. You're going to need meters, and we're going to talk about ammeters and voltmeters. Ammeters measure current. Voltmeters measure voltage. So here's our circuit again. Okay. Now, um, it's a series circuit, like I said, because there's only one path for the current to take. Now, what I'm showing you here is this is just a simple series circuit where my current's coming through. It's going through this one lamp and it's coming back to the cell. Now, you see this A that's circled? That's how we're going to show ammeters in our schematics. In ammeters, all the current has to go through an ammeter. And then for this, down at the bottom, we see a V. That's our voltmeter. Now notice the voltmeter. The voltmeter is cooked up across the lamp. The voltmeter measures a potential difference. So you want to connect up a voltmeter to two points in a circuit that you want to measure the voltage drop or the potential difference between. Now, the ammeter, like I said, is connected in series, and an ammeter measures current, and we allow all the current to go through the ammeter. An ammeter has very low resistance, so you can't damage an ammeter by allowing all the current to go through. But the voltmeter the voltmeter measures voltage, and it's connected in parallel, all right? It's connected in parallel. It's across the lamp. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to talk more about that later on in the chapter. All right, so we've been, I've been talking about current. A current is the amount of charge flowing past a given point in a conductor. The amount of charge flowing past a given point in a conductor. All right, well, we know charge is Q, and that's our coulombs. But what we're going to do to get current is we're going to take that charge and we're going to divide by time. So you can see charge is in coulombs, time is in seconds. So we can see a coulomb per second is equal to the SI unit for current, which is the ampere, or you might hear me say just amps. All right, so using this equation now, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to turn the sheet over, and I want you to try these practice problems. All right, so try the practice problems. So turn the video off, and then I'll go through the answers with you. All right, so let's see how you did. So practice problem number one. 